well, in the, the situation of a bystander helping someone, when in a fire in a building, Superman doesn't wait for Batman to come. Superman says, hey, I gotta get to that fire. Even if, even if the Batman symbol's in the sky and Batman's on his way, Superman has to stop it. Cause if Superman says, hey, Batman got it, the building burns down, who feels guilty? Superman, he could've said, holy crap, I saw Batman had it. Batman could've been sitting in his cave and like this, I think Superman had it. It's a burning fire, he can get up that high and blow the fire out. I can't, all I have is a gadget to, you know what I'm saying? Do something. Don't always wait for somebody. You do be the person. You be that one hero for somebody. Here's what I think about bullying. I think that a bully is someone who's scared. What they do, of course, to not feel so scared is to make you feel scared by bullying you. Academy of Pediatrics says doctors, parents, and teachers shouldn't just focus on the bully and the bullied, but should target the bystanders who witness the bullying. And, target. and we have to make it stop. We can't let intolerance and ignorance take another kid's life. Sucks. Hey guys, look at this picture of the new kid I found. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> That's so funny! <laughs> Give me that! What a loser! <laughs> so rude what those girls said in the comments about him. Very rude.
All right, everyone pay attention. Here's the agenda. I want you to read silently. I have a meeting to go to for a few short minutes, so I'll be right back. All right, everyone read silently. Guys, are you serious? Come on! It's true though. That kid's a loser. And you're a loser for doing that to him. Really? Really. So next time, you want to be a bully. Check yourself before you wreck yourself. Alright, that's a wrap for today. I hope you all behaved well while I was gone. Uh, I hope you wrote down your homework as well, so thank you all very much. Um, I saw some kids uh, picking on Luke, and I didn't know what I should do about that. Was that while I was out of the room? Yeah. Okay. All right, thank you for telling me. I'll talk to Mr. Wagner. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So what happened, Sagan? Um, Mr. Thomas had stepped out just for a second to talk to another teacher, and okay. we were in the middle of reading time, so we stayed reading our um, books, and as he stepped out, there were students who just threw these paper balls at him, and it really got on my nerves, and I had to just tell them to step down and, yeah. All right. What's the kid's name? Luke. Okay. Did you say anything to Mr. Thomas? Um, yes. I okay. Guess I did. All right. I can't ask you to do anything more than that. I appreciate that. Because once an adult knows, once an adult's aware, then we can go ahead and take some steps to really help out, make sure that we're doing everything we can to help kids out. All right. So sometimes all it takes is just somebody letting an adult know, and then you did what you needed to do. We can do everything that we're going to do. All right. So I appreciate that. Keep doing that, man. All right, those things go a long way. All right, thanks, Sam. Thank you. I'll be back. You too. People have spread rumors about me my whole life, and um, it's hard. I mean, I certainly find myself in my industry out to dinner with a bunch of people, and uh, you can't, you know, of course you can, but you can only imagine the kind of stories that I hear. Did you hear that? Da da da. And I am very sensitive, and so I will say, mm, where'd you hear that? And then they get, right away, people go, uh, well, I, um, well, no, I mean, it was, I, you know, I, I heard it from, really? Think about it for a second. Is, is that really something we should be talking about? I mean, are we really gonna sit here, adults, and discuss an infidelity? Questioning it just immediately demands that the person who's perpetrating it kind of have to explain themselves and uh, probably arrests its development a little. Um, I can't say it's going to make it go away, but it might arrest it, and if maybe, you know, down the line, the chain line of gossip, if, if every fifth person stopped it and said, whoa, 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 where'd you hear that? That's not true. It might dissipate the power of it. Bystander effect comes from an experience years ago in New York, this famous Kitty Genovese experience, where a young woman was being stalked and stabbed, uh, and Many, many people heard it, heard her screams, and no one came to her aid. No one even called the police. And two psycho psychologists, actually buddies of mine, um, uh, John Darley and Bib Latine, in trying to understand why, no, why did no one help, they came up with the notion that perhaps the problem was there were too many people, and that, that in this situation, everyone assumes someone else will do it. We call it diffusion of responsibility. And so they started doing a series of experiments where they did this, have a single person versus a group, uh, creating emergency situation. 
And the conclusion was, in fact, the more people physically present in an emergency situation, the less likely it is that any one of them will help. Whereas when there's a single person in an emergency, the probability they will help goes up. And why is that so? Well, what Darley and Latine, the researchers, formulated was that when you're in a group, sometimes even with strangers, and you look around and no one is helping, the social norm is do nothing, don't get involved, mind your own business. So the key then is how do you change the social norm? The way you change it is the power of one. Namely, the moment someone goes to help, within seconds, others join in. Because when you take action, uh, you have a ripple effect. That is, people look around and say, the new norm is help, do something. So now that you know about the bison effect, it's not a check mark on a multiple choice test. J Dolly Latine, bison effect, diffusion responsibility, da, da, da. No, it means that whenever I'm in a situation, I now say, bison effect is in action, what do I do? Here's what I do, here's how I get other people involved. We are giving you knowledge, not to make you smart, but to make you a social activist, to make you a social change agent. Bullying is a situation that takes place in the school. It's unfortunate, but it happens. We always say, we don't have any bad kids. We have good kids who make bad decisions. And one of the most important things that I would ask you to do is if you see a situation where somebody seems upset, bothered, frustrated, angry, talk with them if you can, let an adult know what's going on so that we can do our job and make sure that we're supporting everybody here. Um, we always say that you need to use your sense of humor. You notice somebody's giving someone, there's a little banter back and forth and they're not smiling, it isn't right. We need to go ahead and be involved so that we can help them out so they can come to school and learn. Because that's what you're here for, it's the most important thing that you can do. Is just let somebody know, you see it, report it, and we can help you out. A lot of times, the bully bullies because he wants to get attention from the bystanders around him, the bystanders around him, from the, the peers. His, um, and a lot of times people laugh, and that's called, um, that's basically as bad as the bully. Now some people as well just walk past and don't do anything, that's called silent approval. Silent approval is the fact where people see the bullying, they know it happens, they just don't want to do anything about it because they don't want to get involved. So. What we're looking for people to do is to stand up and to go tell someone. That is the main message of everything that we are trying to tell you in this film. When I was in the sixth grade, I was coming back from the gym and I was changing my clothes in the locker room and all of the other girls came in and one girl um, said that I had taken her clothes or hid them or something and I said look no I really didn't um I don't know where your clothes went but I didn't touch them and um it wasn't just her and her friends huddling around me it became a lot of the girls and especially the the um the bully type girls in the school that, that were bigger than I was that were taller that were ready to fight I ran out of the locker room and I went upstairs and I just remember like huddling in one of the bathroom stalls and like hearing the other girls running up and down the hallway looking for me. Fortunately, I had a cell phone and I called my mom and said, I need you to pick me up from school, I can't be here anymore. If someone had done something and said, hey, are you okay? Or um, is there any way I can help? Or stood up for me in that moment where I was in the locker room and everyone was um, ganging up on me. I think that I wouldn't have been affected as hard as I was with the bullying if somebody had done that. It's important for every bystander to know that they have a purpose because they have the potential to maybe possibly even save somebody's life. As a parent of two daughters, it breaks my heart. It's something that just shouldn't happen in this country. And we've got to dispel this myth that bullying is just a normal rite of passage, that it's some inevitable part of growing up. It's not. We have an obligation to ensure that our schools are safe for all of our kids.
I was bullied a lot as a kid, particularly in uh, middle school. I remember being um, put in the tr trash can in, in, in school and uh, having this thing, I can't remember but what they called it, where four different kids would pull me by each of my limbs, arms and legs, and tug on me. And that feeling right before it happened, when you knew it was going to happen, so dehumanizing and, and scary. And then for the rest of the day, or you know, weeks often, um, I just live in fear of that happening again because I didn't feel like a person when it happened. Deep down, I don't think anyone wants to be a bully. I think that what happens is that it's a weird social environment and it seems like that's the best way to keep from getting hurt yourself. And then if just one person in that group is like, wait a second, maybe we shouldn't do this. Maybe all of a sudden the dynamic completely changes. So I remember that happening in middle school. I remember, you know, one person saying, oh, you know, he is a loser, but like we don't have to like beat him up. Um, and that's, you know, it's, 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 but that made a huge difference. Whenever someone steps in and is like, no, that's actually less cool than you think it is. Like, this is not, this is not helping anybody's social status. All of a sudden it changes the dynamic. My name is Christina and I've been bullied in middle school and I've seen a lot of bullying throughout my middle school years. One of the things that I've learned through my experience would be to watch what you're saying. Be careful with your words. A lot of times we don't really think about how our words are going to impact people until they left our mouth. And by that time, you can't undo it, you can't take it back. So I challenge people to think about what you're saying before you speak. Because you don't, you have no way of knowing what's going on in a person's life or how deeply your words can cut someone because you aren't that person. You don't know their background information. You have no way of knowing. And if you hear or see someone talking about someone, just tell them to stop, step in and say, hey, no, that's not right. You shouldn't say that because you can stop some, this from happening until it actually affects the person. You have power to help in the situation. What I do for a living is write stories, and a lot of them have to do with heroes. And we love them. We tend to like that in the movies, and it's gotten even more so lately, I think, where now we have superheroes. What people don't understand is that they can be a hero in their own life, and they can have the kind of adventure they find so satisfying in the movies simply by stepping forward and saying, let's not do this. You don't have to fly, you don't have to close the wormhole, the wormhole of the space, you don't have to fight Darth Vader. It doesn't take that much. It can be one step forward, it can be one sentence, it can be one look, it could be a hand that you put on someone's shoulder, and suddenly you're a hero.